Right. I have absolutely no idea what's wrong with this because I bought them off a viewer. I've got two of these. Uh, there's this one, which is number one, and then obviously number two. So I only paid £10 each for these and £10 shipping for both of them. So technically I'm in for £15, but I have absolutely no idea what's wrong with them. Okay, it does turn on. I press the disk drive to see if I've got a free disk. Evidently not. But I really can't grumble at ten pound. So if you're watching this back as a video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and all of that jazz. I'm live streaming it on Twitch, so check me out over there. Links are all in the video description. I would really appreciate it. And let's use the patented consolefix.shop HDMI tester to see if this is displaying anything. No, no, it is not. Let's get it apart. To be honest, I'll probably strip them down for parts because no one really wants to buy them anymore, but people do still buy the parts. You know, just the power supply alone is worth what I paid for it. So I can strip them down for parts, and this isn't in great condition either. So. I may as well strip it down. I mean, that, I can't resell that with that case like that. No one's going to want to buy that. So, I probably will strip these down for parts. You know, if I get the motherboard working and stuff. It's just content to me more than anything. So, let's take her apart. See what we can do about fixing her up. It's got some screws missing. There's one missing there. There's one missing there. There's one missing there. We have no encoder. Huh. And damage traces. Ooh. Fun. No encoder and damage traces. Very nice. This should be nice and fun. I haven't done uh, QFN trace repair for a while. Alright. Let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look, she. Ooh. <laughs> that is a lot of damage traces. What have I got myself in for? <laughs> what have I got myself in for? Oh dear. Uh, well, some of them have been run. I wonder why this hasn't been continued. All right, so we've got three traces to run. Alright, what I am going to do is just warm everything up. So I'm just warming the board up because then I can clean off all of the flux and get a better understanding of what's actually happening. Because at the minute it's just caked in flux. So whenever I get stuff like this I always clean the board first because I want to get a better understanding of how bad the solder joints actually are. It's honestly not too bad. It's definitely not as bad as it looks, that's for certain. So I think the first thing to do is just tin all of these joints and all of the pads where I'm going to be running jumper wires to. Right, um, we do have a damage pad there, this one here, I'm not sure if it's meant to join onto that one or not. So, I think I need to grab a donor board. No, it's not meant to join onto there. It is not meant to join onto there, so... Good. So that might be why the seller's given up on this because he couldn't figure out those traces. Maybe. It's hard to say. But 
We should be able to sort this. There's some damage on the HDMI port as well. Okay. Right. Let's get some 0.1 mil jumper wire. And I'm just gonna tin some of this wire. So this is enameled wire, so you have to scrape off the outer coating to be able to make it conductible. Because you're unconductible. So we've got one here, but this one's pretty small. Let's just do that. This knife is way too big to be working on this board. I'll make do for tonight. It's fine. There you go. Yeah, so um, the problem is because I've put everything in boxes, I am going to struggle to find anything for a few days now. Glad I'm not the only disaster. Oh, I'm always a disaster, mate. I'm always a disaster. I'll oh, swap hands. It's a good job I can solder both handed. There we go, that looks nice and uh, nice and solid. Should be good there. All right, this next one, I'm going to come to this test point here. Just so as I've got more of a trace to work with. So I am going to try and follow the original path. So I want to try and keep the original path if I can, or as close to it as I possibly can. Because these are data lines and they do make a difference on trace length. That's why sometimes you'll see traces with like squiggly lines and things like that. It's for timing, so as all of the signals arrive at the same time. Every time I organise my shit, I can't find anything. Oh, mate, story of my life. Story of my life. That's why I despise cleaning. <laughs> right. Same with this one. I'm going to just come to the test point. You get a better contact when you're soldering to test points anyway. So I always prefer to solve those test points whenever I can. So technically I don't even need the knife for that. I'll just wiggle it away. Although that trace is a little bit long. There we go. Should be good. While I've still got some flux there, I'm just going to tin this ground pad. Save me doing it in a minute. You don't need much solder there, but it does act as a heat sink, so I've got to put some there at least.
We do have a pad in the middle missing, but that's a ground. I'm not bothered about that. <clears throat> right, there we go. Go away, jump away. We don't need you no more. You have served your purpose. Now, I don't know why I'll bother rooting these until I've cleaned it up. I suppose it's more to get to make sure I've got the right size um, on the jumper wire, but you always end up knocking them back out. Right, as you're cleaning. But the problem is you can't put conformal coating down unless you clean it first. Otherwise it's just going to contaminate the... Uh, sorry, solder mask, should I say. I'll have people moaning at me think, for calling it conformal coating again. I'm just not going to buy a new tube of this, and I'm just going to label it myself and put it fills conform or coating. Then no one can argue with me. All right, so let's put a bit of solder mask on, and that'll just protect it from the elements, and it'll allow me to use hot air to solder the chip down. This is UVH nine hundred. In case anyone's wondering. That's the actual variant or model number, whatever you want to call it. Mechanic UV H900. UV curable blue. Talking of, let's get the UV light. Expose everyone to UV rays. And leave that sitting there for about 60 seconds. Right, that's nicely cured anyway, so good stuff there. We can drop a, a new chip on that. We'll just visit consolefix.shop and steal one. Steal a TDP158 from consolefix.shop. Brand spanking new. Right, one thing I am going to do with this, because we've got trace repair on this chip, I'm going to tin the chip itself. I don't normally do this, but it's going to help to make sure we get a contact on the jumper wires. So I'm just going to pre-tin the chip. The tinning doesn't have to be spot on we just need to tee them just to make sure we get the contact and that'll just help it to meet with the wire itself Add a bit of flux, a little bit out of focus. Sorry about that. It's a little bit difficult because you've got to get this pushed pretty much exactly down to the right position before you push down on the chip. Damn it, you son of a biatch. Might be a slight bit out of line here. I'll double check it once I've cleaned it up. There we go, nice and clean. She's only absolutely spot on. Come on, that's spot on, man. How about this side? Oh, the jumper wires are out. Yeah, it is a, a couple of mil out. Damn it. 
it needs pushing this way a little bit. Just edit, just edit it for YouTube. The funny thing is that would actually work. It's just I'm not going to leave it out of line. But the the solder, the, the pads are actually making a contact where they need to make contact. But right, so the best way to deal with this is to angle it so as it because the chip's on an angle on the board. So the best way to deal with it would be to angle the chip or angle the board so as it's in the right position. And then just nudge it really slightly. Problem is you have to have a pretty steady hand for that. That's much better there. On the side that was slightly misaligned. What about here? Yep. Just need to touch them joints up and it'll be good. Yeah, now they're tinning better. That feels a lot better to tin them pads now. Much better. Much better. Right, let's clean it up again. By the way, if you're wondering, I'll warm this up while I'm cleaning it because it, it does it does come a lot cleaner than it would do if you was just scrubbing it. Should be good there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Might be very slightly bridged. Yeah, I think it is. That's better. Yeah, more than enough solder on those jumper wires. That will do it. We shall give it a test. This board needs an ultrasonic, to be honest. It's not exactly very clean. It needs a good ultrasonic clean before I can sell this. The question now is, does this display? Fan spin. We have some flux in the port. In fact, that port needs changing. Yeah, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But we do have a... No, that's fine now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. There we go. Uh, actually, no, we don't have EDID. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We don't have EDID. That's probably not going to give me any resolution. Yeah, low resolution. Damn it. Oh, well, this sucks, because now I'm going to have to change the ESD, I see. Yeah, stuck in uh, 644-80, and it's on auto-detect, so we have low resolution only. So that could be the HDMI port or it could be the ESD IC. I don't think it's going to be the encoder because the connections all seem fine. I've got a feeling it's probably going to be the ESD IC, but I'll have a look at the HDMI port. Uh, okay, well, for start, that trace is longer than it should be. Um, so that HDMI trace is going to have to be redone. And then pins are slightly moving. Some of them. So 
So I think if I'm going to redo that trace, I'm going to redo the entire port. Because it doesn't look in the best condition either. Alright, so I'm going to heat up from underneath. I'm just going to pull this port off and change it. But I'm going to redo that trace as well. So the problem with this trace in particular is this is a data line. And as I've explained multiple times in the past, the problem with data lines is there is an actual specification on the HDMI data sheet that cannot be more than four millimeters longer or shorter than the rest of the data lines and this is probably more than four millimeters difference so I'm gonna knock this trace off and just redo it I think if I can get it off because there is conformal coat in there there we go let's get rid of that right that conformal coating's on there pretty solid so I am gonna try and grind it off I think actually let's try and scrape it off with the blade Not going to come off with a blade, not without damaging the board. Let's get rid of that. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Just going to add some flux. I might as well add some flux here as well. And just reaching everything while I'm at it. This trace I should just be able to run solder over it. If not, I can just tack a little jumper wire to it. I'm going to tin these exposed traces just so as we haven't got bare copper. That was just me not not taking care when I was grinding it. It doesn't really matter too much. I knew I wasn't going to damage the you know cut, cut into these lines but yeah that's why whenever you see me doing traces you'll always see me doing uh, trying to follow the same path that it originally had because I want to keep them lines as be as you know as close to factory as I can these are really difficult whereas on the PS5 they're fairly easy because obviously you've got these squiggly lines and that is incredibly hard to replicate it is really, really difficult to replicate that. So I will run a jump away out to this one. Honestly, you just really want to keep the traces as short as you possibly can anyway. Um, but while trying to conform to the original route if possible, what I like to do, just to add a little bit of strength, I do like to try and add a bit of a curve to it. So I'll go that way there like that, and then I'll manipulate the wire, hold it in position where I've already soldered it, and then just tack it down there as well. And then do the same. Just there. I hold it where I've already soldered it and just tack it into place. Ah, damn it. And that's why you hold it into place. Otherwise, you end up losing it. Ah, it doesn't matter about the downward part. As long as I'm sticking to the original trace, it's absolutely fine. I'll position that once I've cleaned it and the reason I run these before I actually put the port on is because then if the port ever gets lifted off these traces are going nowhere they're not going to budge and it'll mean someone can change the port without having to worry about running a new jumper wire it probably isn't going to be this 
you know, the actual cores. Normally when you've got a trace that's um, too long or too short, you know, when you've got a trace that's too much of a difference, generally when that's the case, it normally causes data corruption rather than um, an issue with the resolutions. The resolutions are controlled by the EDID line, um, or CEC line on HDMI rather, but they're controlled by the, uh, well we call it EDID just because it's, that's, a, it's, that's what you get on DisplayPort, but um, yeah the resolutions are controlled by that and that is controlled by that chip there, so in fact those solder joints look horrible, uh, so that could be a reason why. Could just be the fact that those solder joints are absolutely horrible. That is possible. So I'll read in all of those in a minute. But first, I want to see if this fixes it. I don't want to. I don't want to do more than one thing at once. You know, I want to actually see if it was the HDMI port because I don't just like to fix something. I like I like to know what the cause was. I'm just going to put some of this solar mask on the uh, exposed traces. But at least if it doesn't fix it now, then I know it wasn't the port itself. I know that was good. Uh, not that it makes a difference, but I do like to verify the actual cause. And find out why something's doing what it's doing. But I've got a feeling it's the ESDIC because that's where the EDID line passes through. And then it goes into the encoder from there. It's nothing to do with data lines. So as long as you've got pins 15 and 16 connected, you should get an EDID signal. Uh, actually, before I, uh, before I cure that, I should test that with a trace next to it. Make sure that other data line's actually got a reading. So I'll just pop it into diode mode and just test the pin. Yeah, we get a reading. 0 0.68. Uh, so we've got 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 0 0.59. 14 is a no connect. We've got a pretty high reading there on pin 15. 1.03. That's fairly high. And the same on pin 16, so I think this is going to be caused by the ESDIC and not the HDMI port. But we'll see. I will just cure this with UV. But we're getting pretty high readings on pins 15 and 16, so chances are I've got to change that ESDIC. That sucks, but oh well. They don't cost much. The good thing is, these ones on the Xbox One S, you can actually buy them. Right, there we go. Looks uh, pretty good to me. So now that we're keeping that original path, we, we know that we're not going to have any issues with data lines arriving at the, at the correct times, or at least we shouldn't. Right, I don't have any uh, HDMI ports in here. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> got some. Winner. Right. This pack of five can go in my part bin. Yeet. I just stole from consolefix.shop and there's nothing he can do about it. Ha! Whatever you do, do not tell them. When the solder inside is frightening. And your HDMI gets lightning. Let solder flow, solder flow, solder flow. Music album in the future. <laughs> yeah, if you want me to be cancelled. <laughs> I like to have a nice uniform joints in case you can't tell
Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, you couldn't even see it was blurred. Damn it. Well, there you go. Nice and uniform. When your console gets hit by lightning. And the HDMI is frightening. Let solder flow, solder flow, solder flow. Right, well that looks absolutely gorgeous. That looks beautiful. Let's give her a test. And yes, I did that with the heatsink on. I always do, to be fair. It's just easier. I'm not sitting there messing around with heatsinks. Um, a lot of the time, actually, when I'm not streaming, if I do a HDMI retimer on a, on a 1S, I don't take it out of the case. I just literally lift the power supply, move the hard drive out of the way, put a new retimer on it. Easy. It's just quicker. And then I still take it apart to clean it and put fresh thermal paste on it. I just like to get it done quick and then know it's done and then I can service it afterwards. That's yeah, just personal preference. Do we get EDID back? We have power, but do we have EDID? We have all data lines. We do not have EDID. So we should get a blue light in the middle of these two red ones. And we don't. So that's still going to be in low resolution. By the look of it. It's not going to work in uh, 1080p. But. Yeah. No resolutions. Okie doke. Right. So the question is. Is it just down to them shoddy joints. Or is it down to the actual ESDIC. Those joints don't look great do they. So I'm going to. Just retin all of this with some fresh solder. There we go. Nice shiny joints. So the reason I'm thinking it could be the joints is because we're getting a high reading on um, pins 15 and 16. If I just check those readings again, it's going to beep, but let me just check those readings again and see what we get. So if the if the joints are crap, it could be increasing resistance on the on the signals. Now we're getting a decent connection. So pin 15 now is reading 0.42. Pin 16 is still pretty high. That goes to here, this resistor just there, and that one doesn't look as good as the rest of them do. It does look as though someone's been messing around there, because that trace is exposed. As you'll notice, I've just managed to put solder on that trace. So someone's been messing around the around this uh, ESDIC. Let's test pin 16 again. Uh, I can test it from here. Yeah, still no point. Well, still one volt and climbing. Uh, one volt drop to ground in diode mode and climbing. So I'm just doubtful. I don't. I don't actually know what that's meant to read. To be honest, off the top of my head. Well, let's try it again now. So the good thing about doing it while it's got all the parts connected is I can just rapidly test it. And if I see that blue light light up then I'll uh there's a bit of flux in the port. Um but if I see the blue light light up then I can just connect up the HDMI but until then it's kind of pointless. Just dropped a bit of IPA into my connector. Just press on the chip. Uh, I think we have a BGA issue because that was flickering. Yeah we've got a BGA issue there. See that? Yeah, that's going to have to be changed. Oh, that sucks. That's poop. 
So it was flickering on and off when I was pressing down on the ESD IC. I am going to unplug it first, don't worry. I could try reflowing it and see if that works. Because when I was pressing down on that, we was getting contact issues. And all I was doing was pressing on the actual chip itself. So I'll reflow the chip. I have turned it off, by the way. But it looks like the chip might be slightly damaged as well. Oh, that's way out. That's way out. I'm surprised that worked at all. That was way out of line. Yeah, I don't think a reflow is going to solve that. Oh dear God, that's shocking. Say bye bye to that chip. I'm going to be very, very careful here when I'm wicking, while I'm wicking this away. Because those pads have got absolutely no structural support at all at the minute. So what I'm going to do, rather than using the soldering iron to wick this away, I'm just going to use hot air and tweezers. Because there's just no support under that uh, over those pads. There's no coating at all. So I've dropped my airflow down. Let's go 10%. And stop the flux from flying all over the place. That'll do, yeah. So the big problem with having pads exposed like this is the fact that the solder's now got somewhere it can flow to because all of those pads are tinned. So when you drop the chip down, all that's going to happen is the solder's going to flow and you're going to have uneven solder balls under the chip because the solder's just going to move across the traces and Solder always wants to follow where the heat's going, and obviously the heat's going to go through the traces. So it's going to follow. So we're going to have to put conformal coating all over it and protect it. So it looks like that's ultimately what's happened here. You don't want much, just enough so as it forms a barrier to prevent the solder from following the trace. And this is the problem with BGA. There we go. That will do it. More curing. Yay. Right, so I'm going to cure that. That won't take long. A couple of minutes. We're in too deep now. We have to continue. So is this economically viable? Hell no. Hell no. Way too much work gone into this. Right, trace repair on the port. Trace repair on the encoder. Um, fixing up the ASDIC, it's not economically viable. Um, but, you know, we do it just for fun. Right, so that'll just create a barrier. Let's grab a new chip. I have one chip. I cannot mess this up. I'll say I, I'll say I can't mess it up. I could always re -ball it. You know, it's not. it wouldn't be the end of the world, but... I'd rather not, to be honest. you got to bear in mind as well, this is a, a very small chip, so they're not easy to re-ball. Dang. So really low airflow. And once it's partially flowed down, I can add a bit more flux and increase the airflow just to make sure surface tension takes it.
There we go. Well, you see how that's bouncing nicely when I tap on it? That's what we want. We want it to bounce and spring back into place wherever it wasn't before because all of the solid balls would have been uneven. Right, I won't worry about cleaning for now. Let's just check these pins again, see if we've got a reading. Pin 19. Yeah. 18, good. That's better. 0.49. That is much better. And 0.49, same. Yeah, pin 15 and 16, and they're reading absolutely perfect. Good. That will do me nicely. This should work now. I won't worry about cleaning. Just get it tested. Show me that blue light, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Let's get it. Let's go. She'll be working. Now we should get normal resolutions back. Still low res at the minute. But. But. When we go to. Whoops. No, we don't want that. We don't need. Go. Get. 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 Get off. Get. Oi. Go to settings. <laughs> There's the resolutions. Let's get it. Let's go. Boom. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. And just to verify, it won't work in 4K on my capture card. But if we go to the ugly cam, and we get my HDMI lead. Right. Four K, well, fake four K, but four K. Okay, maybe not fourteen forty p. Now it's in four K. One hundred and twenty hertz. That's a win. That was a hell of a rebuild. Now I almost don't want to sell it. Um, yeah, to be fair, I mean, I'll, what can I expect for £10? Can't really expect a lot, can I? But, you know. Uh, yeah, that was ahead of a rebuild. But, um, like I said, can't really expect much for a tenner. Um, three traces on the HDMI encoder. The HDMI encoder itself. Um, a new HDMI port because that one didn't look great at all. And the ESDIC. And the good news is it's not got it's not got FIFA on it, so I'll give this a full test and then I'll decide what I'm going to do with it. I actually don't know yet. I could just put this one in my um, in my media wall in the new workshop when I move into it, but we'll see. Yeah, that's going to be it from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this back as a video, like I said, I did live stream this on Twitch, Twitch.tv forward slash the Coda 2015. Um, links in the description. Also, if you do need any parts, consolefix.shop, all of that good stuff. But yeah, thank you all for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, as always. I'll see you all in the next one.